Hey guys, what's up? Tyler here with T Game and Tech back for podcast number eight. We're going to call this podcast Back in the Swing of Things because that's what we are in. We are in the swing of things again. We took a little bit of a break from the podcasting because we had a lot of crazy things going on, but I have a nice lineup for tonight. Things I've been watching and a lot of things relating to YouTube and it's going to be a night full of awesome, awesome stuff, talking about all kinds of awesome stuff. And so let's just jump right on into it. I'm going to be reading the notes from the good old Nexus 7. I'm going to change it up and read off this this time around. And if you're listening via iTunes or the website tgameandtech.com, you can refer to the YouTube channel where you can actually watch the podcast if you so desire. And so what have I been watching? Well, lately I've been watching Kestel Caden, who is a gamer, and I've been watching his Minecraft vanilla series or vanilla Minecraft series, if you will, which is Minecraft 1.5. And he's been pumping those out pretty much daily lately. And he's a great channel. He has, I think, 8,000 subscribers just now. I do some co-op stuff. I'm actually releasing a video tomorrow um, and it'll actually be released by the time this is uploaded about a Feed the Beast. And so check out his channel. Great content and quality Let's Player. Very entertaining. Awesome personality. I'm definitely not boring to listen to. And so you should check out his channel. That is Kestel Caden. I'll put the link in, links in the description below if I remember. And the next section of what I've been watching is a show called Ruins of the Minecraft. And now this is a map that somebody made for some people in the Minecraft server to play. And Vintage Beef, Etho Labs, and Pause Unpause play this map. And so they're known, more known as Vintage Beef. Vintage Beef, I can't even say his name, Etho and Pause. And they're the ones that play it. They each uh, upload a video of it to their channel. Um, I'm pretty much, I think I'm subscribed to all three of them. Both or all of them as Vintage Beef, Etho, and Pause. It's hard saying their names all in one sentence. But yeah, I'm subscribed to all of them. Um, it's a good series. It's basically somebody took the builds from Minecraft and put it in like this um, des deserted challenge map. It's just really interesting. So you should check over to the head over to their channels and check those videos out. And then the last thing that I've been watching is a show called This Week in YouTube. If you search it up, This Week in YouTube, it's made by um, or it derives out of Twit, um, and it is hosted by Lamar Wilson, Leo Laporte. And Chad Johnson, and it's not the Chad Johnson like the football player Chad Johnson, but a different Chad Johnson, OMG Chad. And so that's a really great show. If you just search This Week in YouTube on YouTube, you should find it. I think the channel name might be This Week in YouTube, YouTube, but I'm not exactly sure. But Leo and Lamar are a great duo, and Chad is also on the show as well. He kind of does some more of the back technical stuff, but he still is on the show. They show him on camera sometimes, and they are a good combination and I would suggest that you check them out. And so that has been what I've been watching. And so now we're going to move on to the actual content of the podcast. And if you're wondering, how do I get on what I've been watching? Well, I have to be subscribed to you and I have to be watching your videos. It's just kind of me, a way to me, way to me, way for me to shout out some people that I've been watching. Some of them don't need shout outs. Vintage Beef and those guys, they don't really need shout outs, but um, it's worth mentioning their channels anyways because it's what I've been watching. And so, um, as far as the actual podcast, today we're going to be talking about mostly YouTube. Um, actually, it's pretty much all, all about YouTube. And YouTube Comedy Week, some stuff about Awesomeness TV. Um, we are going to be talking about a little bit of tech, so we might actually talk about the tech first. Um, we'll talk about my channel milestones that I've just accomplished. And then we're going to talk about Jenna Marbles. And this, you'll have to hang with me on that one. And then we'll talk about traditional media, such as television. And so let's just start with technology. The Galaxy S4 and the HTC One have been out for a little while now, and people are getting their reviews in, their comparison videos. Matt from iTech224 has the HTC One. Um, TechFi has the HTC One, the HTC First, and I think the BlackBerry Z10. He has a lot of phones. And you can head over to those channels to check out some unboxings and some camera tests and all kinds of stuff. And a lot of people have been saying that they're good phones. Um, Matt just tweeted a little, early, a little earlier today that the Galaxy S4 seems a little bit slow um, compared to something like the HTC One. And um, a lot of people say nice things about the HTC One. The body of it looks great. It's, the build quality is great. Um, HTC Sense, though, kind of ruins it, honestly, in my opinion, because I hate manufacturer skins because I think they just ruin Android. But, you know, as far as hardware, it's a great phone. I've heard good reviews about it. Um, they're kind of considered the new flagship for Android devices, the Galaxy S4 and the HTC One. And they're kind of what's going to be duking it out this time around, at least for now, until something else gets released. And so 
you know, I don't have the HTC One or the Galaxy S4 myself, but looking at other people's videos, I would prefer probably probably the HTC One because I have the Galaxy S3, and the Galaxy S4 is the Galaxy S3 basically with upgraded internals with a couple extra features like you know hover to text or something weird like that, a bunch of gimmicky things, but it's basically a hardware upgraded like internally. I'm not really much else different looking wise than the Galaxy S3. Um, they're still using plastic, polycarbonate. It feels cheap. This phone feels like a cheap phone, even though, you know, it performs great. But the HTC One has that aluminum build, and it looks awesome. It feels like a solid phone. I would rather have a phone weigh a little bit more and be a little bit heavier and be made of aluminum and feel like a solid phone than a flimsy piece of plastic. Fim flimsy piece of plastic and weigh a couple kilograms less or grams less, I don't know. That's my personal opinion. I mean, we came from having these big chunky phones that weighed like 10 pounds. I think we can maybe reverse a little bit and carry around something that's a little bit heavier just because it looks a little nicer and has a better build quality. That's my opinion. So that's really all I have in terms of tech. Everything else is YouTube related. And the first thing about YouTube is um, YouTube Comedy Week. Now, YouTube is going out and they're bringing in People who are known in the comedy sphere um, in television and movies and film and they're putting them on YouTube. They're going out away from YouTube to these people and they have to pay them big time money to come and be on YouTube. It's not going to work. Nobody's interested in that kind of stuff because here it is. On YouTube, we have thousands of channels, hundreds of thousands of channels. There is good content on YouTube. There's been some stuff written lately saying YouTube is not a legitimate source of entertainment. All it is is cat videos. There's no good production on YouTube. Are you kidding me? Like, I don't claim to have the best production around, but I guarantee you I have better productions than some of these local commercials I see on TV. Now, I know they're not saying about local commercials, but I see t television shows on YouTube, well, I guess they'd be YouTube shows, produced just as well, if not better, than a lot of TV shows. So I don't know where they're getting this. Obviously, they haven't watched much YouTube because um, I can't think of really any TV-ish kind of shows um, off the top of my head. But I know one, now they don't have the gear like TV shows do, but Retro Liberty, they go out and they have the NES Pursuit. They go out to these sales and swap meets and try to find classic and retro Nintendo games, NES games, Super Nintendo games, anything like that. Um, some older games especially, and they are filmed, they give information about the games, they show footage from the games, they show interacting with the salespeople. It's very interesting, and I would watch that show on television. And it reminds me of something like um, American Pickers, kind of, because in American Pickers, they go around, they search people's stuff, and they pick out stuff, and they sell it, and then they usually sell it off for a higher price. Well, the guys from NES Pursuit, Retro Liberty, they go out, they search for these games, and they're buying them pretty much for their own personal collection. And so that's kind of a TV-ish kind of show, I guess, that I would definitely watch if it was on television. Now, their production isn't the greatest. It's not like movie film technology. They don't have a 4K camera. They don't have boom mics and lav mics and wind filters and an enclosed area to film. They just have a regular camera, and that's what they do. They film, and it's a great show. That is where content is... Probably, definitely more important than your, your gear. They have a great show despite just having a little camera. And they actually have pretty good quality for just having that one little camera. Now, they do do voiceovers through that are in studio with a microphone, which sound good. But my point is that there's a lot of channels on YouTube. Now, my screen just went black. There's a lot of channels on YouTube that don't have high-quality TV line production equipment but they produce just as good as content. And so I don't know why people are saying that YouTube is just irrelevant. It just blows my socks off. Um, but I think YouTube's foolish for going out and paying other people who do not belong on YouTube, trying to bring them on YouTube and act. Okay, when people act on TV, they're acting as somebody else. They're not who they actually are. I think Vince Vaughn might be one of the guys they're trying to bring in. Vince Vaughn does not act like Vince Vaughn on TV shows. He is not Vince Vaughn. He is some other dude. People on YouTube are themselves. Lamar Wilson is Lamar Wilson on YouTube. He's not trying to be somebody else. 
All these guys, me on YouTube, I'm myself. I'm not trying to be somebody else. All these comedy people, they are themselves. They're not trying to be somebody else. So I don't know why YouTube has to go out of its way to find other people and bring them in. Nobody cares about that. It's been proven that when they bring people in and try to force people to be YouTube stars, they've given YouTube channels $1 million and they can't do anything with it. Why are they throwing money into a furnace and burning it up? There's all kinds of channels they should be investing in on YouTube and helping support them. I don't know why they have to think they have to go somewhere else to get it. It's stupid. I think it's stupid. I think YouTube needs to look what's popular within YouTube in the comedy cell comedy realm search around in there because there's great content and so i think they're foolish for going out and bringing people in so next talking about dreamworks buying awesomeness tv awesomeness tv does not have a good reputation they have a youtube channel that's really weird it's, i guess it's focused on like teenage girls at least from what i could tell but their network is basically a scam they've scammed countless people countless people come into social blade and ask us help how can we get out of awesomeness tv we never signed anything but they said we're in a contract with them they have us in their network how does that happen um i don't i don't know how that happens and awesomeness tv is kind of sketchy i don't know why um they're just not a very good company in my opinion they do a lot of shady things i think and apparently dreamworks thinks it's interesting so they bought them out but i think they bought them out specifically specifically for the youtube channel they have aimed at younger audience but they're also getting the network that looks pretty bad looking at, at it from another network standpoint because they're trying to trick people and apparently put people in their network against their own will i don't know if i was dreamworks i wouldn't be buying awesomeness tv so that's just kind of a little bit of network news for you. Don't go with Awesomeness TV. Don't do, just don't do it. As far as this channel, I just hit 2,000 subscribers on this channel and 700 subscribers on Player Select Gaming. So we're hitting some nice milestones there, and the channels are continuing, continuing till wow, continuing, continuing to grow well. Take a grammar class, and I think this summer is going to be extremely nice and it's going to be extremely beneficial to my channels. And I'm looking forward to what's going to be happening and how they grow and working with some other people, some good things on the horizon for my channels. And so the last thing I want to talk about is Jenna Marbles. Now, not about her. I'll be straight up honest right now. I do not like her videos. I can't stand her content. I think it's vulgar. I think it's gross. I think it's just not the way a lady should act, much less a, a man. Like the things she does and says are extremely inappropriate and... I, it's not a family friendly show and I would not want my kids watching that. Um, but that's my opinion. But Jenna was recently on um, good morning America for an interview. And on the interview, she was asked some questions, you know, they said, Oh, you know, she has a billion followers on YouTube. She has more friends on Instagram than Oprah Winfrey and doing all this kind of stuff. She's so popular on YouTube. And then they say these things and then they go and degrade her by saying, um, Let's count the amount of times you use ridiculous in your interview. And they counted like 16 times. And then um, they said, she makes videos about nothing. She makes videos about nothing. Okay, so she's vlogging her life kind of. I haven't watched many of her videos. The ones I have watched, I've usually left within two minutes. Um, but she's in front of her webcam. She talks to the webcam. She does some tutorials. She gives some advice apparently. That's what I've heard. Um, so it's definitely not nothing. It's not like she just sits there and stares at the camera. So she's providing some kind of content. But they would go to the extent and say that she makes videos about nothing. That she she just doesn't hold herself very professionally. They made her look like an idiot. Honestly. I mean, they're like, they showed like different clips of her saying ridiculous. Oh, this is ridiculous. That's just ridiculous. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Because she says ridiculous a lot. Okay, that's fine. That's the thing she says. But they used it and turned it to make her look stupid. They blatantly insulted her and made her look dumb. And they completely ignored the fact that she has a master's from Boston University. So she's actually really smart. I don't know how that slipped the interview. But they insulted her. Like... Like I said, I don't agree with hardly anything she posts on her channel. I think it's trash. But that does not, that aside, you don't say that about people. You don't make them look to be stupid when they're definitely not. They have a master's degree. You don't say that their YouTube channels are about nothing. You cannot take away the success that she's had. Okay, she is extremely popular on YouTube. And they're saying, let's meet the most popular girl that you've never heard of. And it's like, 
Who's heard of you? You're a news anchor. Who knows you? What's your name? This girl's name was Cecilia. Who is that? You have a you have a job on Good Morning America as a news anchor. Jenna Marbles is probably making three times as much as you are. I mean, let's be serious. She's raking in much more than you, and you have the audacity to say, you know, let's how many how many times have you said like in this video and just rude comments. You know, maybe they told her to say those things to her. That the interview was set up that way, but it's just completely rude and uncalled for. Um, I applaud Jenna for not um, submitting to TV signings and stuff like that. People have offered her TV spots and stuff, and she's re rejected them all. You know, I applaud her for that. Um, I think traditional media doesn't understand YouTube, and this is my last section. Uh, traditional media is afraid of YouTube. They don't understand it. Um, they don't understand how influential somebody can be on YouTube. Jenna Marbles has millions of subscribers. I don't know how many exactly, but she's pretty influential. What she says, thousands and thousands of people are going to see every video. And so traditional media, radio and television, newspaper, I guess, does that still exist? They don't understand YouTube at all. It's kind of makes me wonder why YouTube's bringing people from TV to YouTube. Do people who run YouTube even understand YouTube anymore? Get back where YouTube started. People making videos about anything, not just their cats, their daily lives, vlogging, doing this kind of thing, talking with the audience, engaging with the audience. One thing that traditional media will never have is engagement with the audience like YouTube does. You can have comments on your videos. You can reply to comments on your videos. I can't watch Duck Dynasty and reply to Duck Dynasty as I'm watching the video and have them reply to me. You just can't. And so... Traditional media, it just doesn't understand YouTube. I don't know. I don't think they ever will. I don't think they ever will. And I think people who become stars on YouTube, I think they can go over and they can be stars on television. I think that will work perfectly fine. But I do not think stars on television can come over and be stars on YouTube because people know them from television. They know they put on a fake front to act as an actor, to be somebody else, which is their job. They come to YouTube and try to be something else. It's like, who are you? Are you who you're acting to be? Are you that actual person? If they start out on YouTube, they know that person. They know what they've been doing. They know about them. They know where they've started. And it's easier, them for, the, easier for them to move to television. I know I Justine's doing some of that stuff a little bit. I'm not sure to the extent, but you know she can move from YouTube to something else because it works that way. It doesn't work the other way around. But that's my opinion. You can feel free to prove me wrong and address it down in the comment section below if you're watching via YouTube. And so that's really all I have for today. I just wanted to talk about YouTube a little bit um, about, you know, I just don't understand why YouTube does some of the things it does. We have such a rich crowd and such a rich spring of producers on YouTube. I just don't understand why we're trying to reach out to other sources to get content creators when they're already here. And I think traditional media needs to start studying YouTube because they could learn a thing or two. And, um, they need to watch what they say about YouTubers because they're influential. You got a million people fighting against your network because you said what bad things about a girl. You're going to have an issue maybe. Just food for thought. And so that's going to wrap up this podcast. Um, thank you so much for watching and or listening. If you want to check out some of the previous episodes, they're here, they are here on T-Game and Tech as well up, as uploaded on tgameandtech.com and on iTunes if you search T-Game and Tech podcast. You can search them there. We're going to be doing these podcasts weekly. I'm going to be streaming them Thursday nights, and they should be uploaded Fridays. That is the plan. But as for this one, we're going to wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, comment down below with anything um, that you have in terms of thoughts and opinions about anything I've said. Um, let me know what you think about YouTube and whether or not they should be going and fetching these um, comedian stars to be on YouTube. I don't think they should, but I want to know what you think about it down in the comments below. And what do you think about Good Morning America completely blasting Jenna Marbles and completely saying these rude things to her? Let me know down in the comments below. So that's going to wrap up this podcast. Check out all the social links that are also in the description below. And thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you guys in the next podcast.